What is going on, everybody? Thank you all so much for tuning into this live stream segment of Mikasa Sukasa. And of course, as always, I'm your humble, humble host, Nico House. Today, uh, we want to address something that has really not only been splintering the progressive movement, but our ability to achieve progressive, leftist, or populist policies as a whole. Whether you want to talk about universal health, bringing the medication that's already available into the country uh, in Massé so that we can deal with this COVID-19 crisis, the gain power and corrupt without any accountability. Today, the guest I'm bringing on wants to talk about how to bridge that divide. So I would like to introduce you all to Egberto, who's recently wrote written a book and he's going to talk to us about this today egberto what's going on man thanks for coming on the show man it's always a pleasure to be with you nico uh, it's great to see you uh, you're looking great and you're doing a lot of good things great to be here my friend hey man i appreciate it um and also of course appreciate you having me on your show last time uh and and it's interesting because i feel like no matter what conversation we're having uh, no matter what disagreements we we have as far as maybe how to achieve some of our goals like as leftists we 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 seem to agree that this is one of the biggest problems that we have as a like as a human race but especially as americans when we're talking about trying to get policies passed so can you go ahead and let people know like uh w the name of your book you know where people can find it, and of course what's what's what the, the just give a synopsis of what it's about Absolutely. Uh, you can get the book. It's called It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors. And in as much as it says uh, right-wing relatives, friends, and neighbors, uh, as Nico would uh, can tell you, when you're in the, le the movement on the left side, a lot of times you feel like the people to the right of your leftness or even sometimes to the left of your leftness needs uh, needs a different way, a different approach to talk to these people. All these approaches that I talk about in the book works around the clock. In other words, uh, the most important thing that I try to display in this book is communication. But uh, And by the way, to get the book, you can just go to, uh, to Amazon and look up my name, Egberto Willies, and you'll see all the books that I've written. Or just look up It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors on Amazon. Alternatively, you can come to my website, egbertowillies.com, and click on Books. And once you click on Books, you can get to it. But anyhow, the, 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 the tenet behind this book is how we can all communicate together so that we can really fight the real battle that needs to be fought. Because what has happened, Nico, in my humble opinion, is that we have allowed that plutocracy, that oligarchy, that imperial power that you and I and many others always talk about, to go ahead and look at those things that we say we have as differences and use them against us so that the vast mass of us are there uh, fighting among each other, not realizing that we need to look up there mm. for where the problem really is. Yeah, uh, I would I would agree. Um, you know, it's funny that uh, you just you just I mean, you talked to me about coming on the show before Jimmy Dort went on Tucker Carlson on Fox News, somebody who is kind of despised by the left on a network that is definitely despised by leftists and Democrats. Uh, and yet he went on the show to deliver Donald Trump a message uh, that included universal health care, that included ending the wars, that included holding the corrupt Republicans that he ran uh, on being anti-establishment uh, and beat them, right? He, inc including holding them accountable. And Tucker Carlson said to Jimmy Dore, a rabid, angry leftist like myself, you, he said that you're giving Donald Trump more uh, or better advice than any of the conservatives in Washington. And that is huge. Co compared to where we were four, five, six years ago. Because we see right now, the Democrats have no problem teaming up with neocons to beat us. And the Republicans have no problem teaming up with a lot of the neoliberals, at least the, the, the highest the highest uh, ranking ones to, to beat us. And then of course, subsequently their populist base. So when are the populists, the ones who are actually anti-imperialist, the ones who are pro-universal healthcare, uh, when are they going, or when are we, going to start bridging that same gap so we can start getting some victories on our side. We are going to bridge that gap when we grow up. 
That's the bottom <laughs> line. We are going to bridge that gap when we've grown up. You've grown up. Uh, Thank you. Somebody else said that know, the other day, actually. That's weird. No, and the reason I... my beard? Is it because of my beard? No, not because of your beard. Because <laughs> of who you talk to. You don't restrict yourself to the choir. You extend yourself to the right you extend yourself to the middle, you extend yourself everywhere. You, you're willing to have that conversation with all these different people. And that is, believe it or not, that is a tenet of my book, right? In other words, we have to grow up and we have to learn how to create alliances. But most importantly, we have to understand, Nico, that the things that we want, ironically speaking, most people want as well. Mm. They, are, they have just been taught to want it differently. I uh, what, One of the things about the book, right? The book is 231 pages. A quick read according to a lot of the people and the reviews are actually pretty damn good. Uh, uh, pretty, uh, I have to say that because it's like, oh, really? Wow, I never thought about that. But one of the things that I, I want to tell you that that's important, right? Is if you take a look and you itemize all the things that people want, and then you see whether this come from people. You don't give it an ideology. You don't say left, right, progressive, or anything like that. You just go ahead and talk about the things we want. People have equal access to uh, equal access to healthcare and all of that. You'll see that the vast majority of people, sixty to eighty percent of people, come down and want the same thing. So here's the, the, the deposit that I had in the book. I had a conversation sitting down at a Starbucks with a woman. And this was a, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in a very conservative area and that's where I live. And I sit down in a very conservative Starbucks. And as I'm sitting down in Starbucks and I'm talking- That's funny you conservative Starbucks. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. But you know, so I, I'm sitting down there and this woman comes up and she, she said, I see you in here all the time writing. And I'm like, yeah. And she says, um, you know, we, we got into healthcare. I don't remember exactly how, but and then I went ahead and I explained to her what I'd like to see in healthcare. And she was uh, loving it and she was even offering her ideas as well. And I know this woman is conservative and I know this how this woman thinks, right? And by the end of, I start to feel guilty. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this woman thinks this is some black Republican here and she's agreeing with this. So I, I, I'm guilty now and I say, ma'am, I want you to know something. I'm a left wing progressive democratic socialist okay mm -hmm. and she looked at me and she says oh eyes wide open face red and she says but you're so nice <laughs> yeah that happens often yeah okay <laughs> so you get what i'm saying nico you yeah. understand what i'm saying so i'm, I'm looking at her and i'm like ma'am what you have to do is interact with people and you realize that we are all being played Yep. We're all being played. And once we realize that we are all being played, we can have a conversation. So the way I divided that book, Nico, is I went ahead on the table of contents, all of that you can find at my website as well. I, I went ahead and talked about how you talk to people, how you respect people. You mm -hmm. and I disagree on that. And by the way, you share a lot of that, that commonality because you and I, I've been on your show before, you've been on my show, and we disagree on issues, right? Well, and I don't think we disagree on necessarily issues. Not, not issues. People, like, approach. that's about it. Maybe approach. We disagree. Yeah, approach. There you go. Right. And But the thing about it is, I don't come after your neck, and you don't come after mine. A lot of times, we have fun with it. A lot of times, we just discuss it. A lot of times, you will say, well, like, Berto, I think it would be better if you had to this way. And I may say, no, look here, Nico, I think it's... <laughs> and, you know, that is how you have a constructed... I went to a Tea Party event. I also put that in the book. I went to a Tea Party event in a redneck portion of Houston. Only black person there, only progressive there. Uh, what do you call those flags again? Um, the Rebel the, flags. Right. The, the rebel flags, all of that in there. And I'm sitting down yeah, in you there. Know, you know how you know I live in the South. I immediately knew what you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you sure do, brother. You sure do. But, you know, so we go out there and we start talking. These people... I, they wanted to show me in that place that they weren't racist. They are racist, but they wanted to show me that they weren't. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's, it's funny that happens. That, like they go out of their way, they do extra shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they wanted to show me that, but they were, and the things that they said, they, they, in trying to be nice, they showed who they were, that's okay. But by the time we were done because of the conversation we had, I don't say that they're not racist anymore, but I can say one thing, they look at you and me quite a bit differently because they never had somebody who was willing to break that barrier, go into them, and not, on, not first do a lot of talking to them, 
But hear what was their real grievances because they think they have grievances, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got the whips and we got the, I don't care if you're from Panama or Cuba or wherever, we got whips all over the damn place in yeah. the, on this hemisphere, right? Yep. Look at, so, what, look at Bolivia. Look, you know what I'm saying? That That's a perfect yes. example. Yes. Well, you know, it, it, moral, yes. Anyway, we won't. Well, I'm we'll, saying like he's, a, well, he's indigenous, but I'm saying like, look at what happened to the indigenous people. Um, yep. And of course, the 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 white minority was with with the help of the U.S. was look at what they were able to do and look at how much pain they caused, but for basically for no other reason that those people were indigenous. Like that's exactly. what it really what it comes down to. Exactly. So so these people thought they had grievances. By the time we were done. I wasn't trying to tell them they don't have grievances. I was trying to get them to acknowledge our grievances, right? Yep. And you know what? Uh, it, it's amazing because that's where they got. Let me tell you how you know. You, you don't know if you're successful unless a few days later people still want to be in touch with you. Because after the event is done, right, mm -hmm. they can wash their hands off of you and say, okay, we got that out of here. We said the piece that we want. But that's not what we got. We got a people that started to contact me and say, hey, Egberto, um, you, you know, what do you think about this? You know, they, 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 simp they constantly wanted uh, uh, sort of more information to kind of get, get where their position really was. And let me tell you how interesting it got. Even one of the daddies called me up. Hey, I'm a computer guy and I'm starting this new business. Are you interested in partnering with me? Wow. And I'm like, Wow. Wow. And Nico, this comes from, first of all, I tell, you know, people tell me, that I don't see how you have the patience to talk to those people. And I would say the reason I have the pay, the reason I can talk to them is they're not those people. You know, mm. I, I, you know, because you know how people refer sometimes to black folks as, as those, those people. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, 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 even though many times I'm not afforded the respect from them, I try I, I try a false reciprocity. I even as I don't get it, I try to give it and see how you far give it. Give the energy me. that you want to receive, you know? Right. That's and that's that's important. That's what you what you should be doing by the way in any aspect of your life. Like for anybody who wants to be successful in anything you do, you should be giving the energy that you want to get back. Uh, that's how you start successful businesses, successful relationships. Um, you know, that's how you should treat your kids. That's how you should treat your parents. And, and, and I would say that of course, if you want to be successful and if, when you're talking about somebody who considers themselves on the other side of the spectrum of you, you really have to keep that type of energy because like, we can go in combative and of course what are you going to get back like i'm not going to go in and attack this person expect for them to treat me to ice cream and, and, and a beer like that's right. not how it works um right. and I, I, like i was at a a, a a conference called better discourse and i was i was on a panel with two leftists it was me and another leftist and two conservatives it was the only black person to speak actually at this event but um they went out of their way to invite me because and they did invite others to be clear other other people did not want to go because mm -hmm. there were too many conservatives. It was like going to be half and half. That was too much for them. And I had no problem. I'm like, yeah, of course. And I actually had been talking to the conservatives that I didn't know were conservatives before the event started. And they didn't know I was a leftist until the event started. Mm -hmm. And, but we had just had such a good time. We didn't, oh, what's up? We didn't know we're on the panel together. And of course there were some disagreements. Um, but by the end of the panel, a couple of conservatives from the audience came up to me and told me that their mind had been changed on reparations. They were like, well, I don't know if they, they was like, I don't know if I believe in the cash payment side, but the argument you laid out, I, I just had never heard that before. Mm -hmm. And I never thought about it like that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, don't, I, and they were like, well, what do you think about, for example, indigenous reparations? Like, I'm like, oh, I actually think they should get it first. And they were like, wow, okay. And just being principled, right? And consistent is will win somebody over. Because they're thinking they their image of the left is what the the right, in my opinion, is very good at selling the hypocrisy of the left mm -hmm. because, you know, it's easy to maintain the status quo. That's basically the right's goal, right, is to maintain the status quo. It's easy to be consistent in doing that. It's right. hard to be consistent when you're talking about change 
and why you want that change. That I think that is. that is that is the, what the left really has to work on is being consistent. It can't just be about me because the right is doing the same thing. Let's be honest, right? They're preserving their status quo that benefits them. So why would they want it? They're, so if you're going to be selfish, then once again, it's about the recipro reciprocation of energy. But if you are consistent, like I said, in that particular situation, I fully 100% believe that indigenous are owed a lot of money in this country. Um, and I would be perfectly fine if they got theirs first. And that's kind of like how we just, like I said, it's, we just have to be able to reciprocate the energy. So I 100% agree. So um, have you gotten, have you, have you gotten a negative review from your book yet? Uh, a negative review? No, I got reviews from all the people who read it. That's what I, that's what I really look for. I am not looking for the big names. I'm looking for the persons who read the book. Let me, let me, let me tell you a little uh, concept here mm -hmm. that I do. I've written three books. Every book I have actually uh, written, produced, and marketed on my own for one specific reason. There is a, the owner of the largest website, I won't give the name right now, he called me up and he said, Egberto, who do you use to market your book? Who do you, and I said, I do it all myself. He said, because I, I was, you know, he said something to the effect, he, I don't remember what he got. Somebody asked him to write a book. They gave him $10,000, but he never made any money thereafter because uh, the book sales and all of that kind of stuff, uh, by the time they took all your cuts and by the time they mm -hmm. did all this stuff, he was left with nothing. And, and not only that, they decided how it was marketed, et cetera, et cetera. I'm, a, I'm first an activist, second, a radio host blogger, and thirdly, an author. And the, I write about the things that really affect what I think is the masses, as well as, you know, your, pers your personal being, like in the Weight Watchers book uh, that I wrote. I mean, mm -hmm. in today's day, you don't need to have anybody out there that's marketing your book. If you have, a, if you have your, own, uh, your own system, you do it yourself. And guess what? All three of them have done very well. And guess what? All three of them have been done solely through independent, uh, independently. And I, I, I am encouraging quite a few more people that have a voice that think they need the approval of the system to go ahead and do it on your own. And like I, you know, one of the books that I'm writing, uh, I have like three or four more books in the, actually it's four more books in the, in the um, chain. And one of them is, is about talking to people like us you know, who have platforms, who have a message, and many are out there looking for somebody to, uh, what is the word that I want to use, looking for somebody to affirm them. I'm like, oh, you don't need anybody to affirm you. I'll affirm you, you'll affirm you, Nico will affirm you, all of us will affirm you. We don't need to have the plutocracy in charge of whether and how our books going to be marketed. Yeah, and you're, so the conversation that we had the first time we talked actually is like the reason I decided to do a book. I'm doing a book soon. I'm not going to, I don't want to give out the name and everything like that, but mm -hmm. it's coming um, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a release around. And you know, it's going to be on my site too, brother. <laughs> oh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Like I said, and that's, that's kind of what we have to do uh, around the like activists and independent journalists um, and, and populists really have to really just promote each other and market each other because as we've seen from Google as of late, it's not coming from them. You know, mm -hmm. they're not going to let us get the message out. It's really, up to us we have to do it uh the way that people did in the old days you right <laughs> get out get on and push it and, and right and network and, and build and that's really uh and i think that that it's it's coming the wave is coming and i'm starting to see it more and more and there are more people connecting uh like that and i think that um like like i said be, I'm, I, when i talk to him like damn i think i could do that i definitely think i could do that i mean like I was at UNC when I tell you I probably had to type 227 pages a week. <laughs> that was that that so that's not difficult for me. But mm -hmm. um, the the marketing and the the publishing side was what was what I was worried about. And when you told me like yeah no it's it's not that difficult and it's better for you in the long run. Um, I was like you know what let's just I'm, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I think um, I can say what the topic is going to be. The topic is going to be uh, about just. The consistent patterns of the breakdown in democracy and that and, and how that's used against us to maintain power and how like there's this just massive campaign of deception to convince us that 
um, whenever somebody says they want to go bring democracy, that it's not about democracy, it's about something else. It's usually about a, a type of control. And so that's what that's the, definitely going to be the goal of the book. And I'm, re- I'm like really excited about it. Um, but now I'm, I'm like, like I said, more excited because I've always wanted to write a book for like the last three years. But the publishing uh, and the marketing has been what always worried me. And you kind of like brought peace of mind to me uh, when we talked a few months ago about like, no, that's actually not that difficult. It's just like finding the time to sit down and focus and getting it done. That's the most you know, difficult part. You know, Nico, I want to add to something that you just said there, right? Because what happens in, in the country, right, is that we, we, you know, you have the stock broker that sells stocks for companies, that people work for these companies. And I put this in the book as well. People work for these companies and these stock brokers that sit down and push paper create a job for themselves as if they're really needed. Uh, mm-hmm. The executives create a job for themselves as if they're really needed. The guy who, uh, you remember when uh, in the days, you, you're um, younger than I am, but in the early days and uh, when you had records, right, you had to have, to, to even get heard, you had to have somebody who pushed your record they to a radio are, thing. Yeah. All these, that's done with, right? Mm-hmm. That's done with. And what we realize when people have freedom, you know, a lot of people on the right and the left like to talk about freedom. Real freedom is really access to the market, right? Mm. Access for people to see what you can do, mm-hmm. right? And it, in, in the past, there were doors that were put up. There was a false freedom. You had to be discovered. Who the hell have to discover that Nico House is a smart dude with his own radio show that knows what the hell is going on? You know that. So why the hell do you need somebody to affirm you? Mm. You don't. So what we preach is like, hey, you know, uh, we have the freedoms right now. That's what we got to guard against now, net neutrality and all these guys. We got to guard against that now because we got to make sure that we don't lose what we the real freedom that we've attained. Right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of the narratives, you know, this book is about a little bit about uh, how we talk to people. How can how much do can I really say about, hey, Nico, the way I can talk to people on the right and the left is I make sure to be nice and respectful and civil. And I also hold back my feelings where I know that it's, you know, I, I mean, that, that can be covered in 20 or 30 pages. Mm. But the other parts of the book, what it does is one, it gives us an enlightenment to how the system really works, right? And how this system is used so that we don't have civil uh, conversations so that we don't have love for each other and all that kind of stuff. Because I tell you what, if you sit down and talk to a lot of these people that you think you should hate and you sit down and talk to them and the first thing you talk about is, hey, my daughter, you know, my daughter's in school right now and, you know, she's going through this. The first thing they're going to want to do as well is, you know, yeah, my daughter is X, Y, Z. And you start seeing those commonalities. Suddenly it's like, oh, shoot, you mean you put on your pants the same way I do, man? <laughs> yeah that's it you see so that's the whole deal i mean man. we might that's- not put our you know do our hair the same but, you know. <laughs> hey but i like hey i'm gonna I'm do my hair like yours man you think i could you think i could find a way to do it like yours nico look i i mean i don't know if there's a dye strong enough to die <laughs> look somebody found that magic formula to bring hair back i don't know where all these celebrities are finding hair after not having it for years but there's a secret out there somebody to get <laughs> and it ain't hair plugs either people are really growing their hair, hair back man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you know. It's, maybe it's this marijuana legalization. Maybe weed is helping people grow their hair back. Hey, by the way, folks, we got to get that going. We got to get the marijuana legislation going, man. Yep, and we also need to start building some some business, some working class worker owned co ops to make sure that we don't have the marijuana industry end up like the tobacco industry, and then have Monsanto and Bayer, and Bayer like uh, you know pumping them full of GMO. It has already do. started. Bur- uh, Boner is on one of the boards of a marijuana company. Think mm-hmm. about that. Former uh, House uh, Speaker yeah. Boner. Bur- yeah. What? People you know don't what? know. And the, and the racism in the in that carried that was in the tobacco industry and in uh, the cotton industry is now right. is continuing over into the marijuana industry and the hemp industry. And right. So, and people are being prevented from getting licenses and uh, like it's a big deal right now in Maryland. I know. So it's um, you know that's why like I said we just have to. Put together. But this is like, once again, this is kind of like that that conversation, the conversation that we need to be having. I don't think anyone would disagree that everyone should have equal access because, yeah, like in, in obviously in black communities, we were detrimentally affected by um, this plant that like now liberal, you know, middle class white people are able to make millions and millions of dollars off of. But also in a very unique way, if there's no black people there, 
uh, the poor white people suffer in the same way. They're the ones who were villainized by that plan, you know, right. and, and that and, and so and in their community, I can guarantee if you go to somewhere in West Virginia, they're being disallowed from getting their fair share in that profit where a lot of their people suffered from it. And so those are the commonalities that we really have to find between each other. Once again, Egberto, tell everybody where they can find you at and, uh, and where they can find your book. All right. First of all, you can find my show at politicsdoneright.com. Again, that is at politicsdoneright.com. You can find the book at my website, which is uh, egbertowillies.com, egbertowillies.com. Just click on books. But if you want to find it at Amazon, since I know my name is sort of one of those difficult names to say, you can just go to amazon.com and look up It's Worth It, How to Talk to Your Right-Wing Relatives, Friends, and Neighbors, and it's by Egberto Willis, me. And, uh, and you know, the, I, I guarantee you're going to enjoy the read, and especially in these times when we have a whole lot of time for those who must stay home, it's a good, solid read, whether you get it on Kindle or you get the hard copy. Now, if you buy it from our store, meaning if you buy it from our website, I'll autograph the books because I'll send it out if it's ordered from my website. If it's ordered by uh, from Amazon, of course, I, I can't run up to the warehouse at Amazon and sign it. So, you know, <laughs> so please go to like bertowillies.com, politicsdoneright.com, or just look it up at amazon.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on, Egberto. As always, it was absolutely a pleasure. Make sure you go, you all go to his website. Uh, go check out that book. It's something that I feel like the left is in dire need of, and I'm kind of surprised that there hasn't been a book about this already, but Egberto is doing all of us a favor. Can I give you some kudos, brother? Oh, yeah. Go, please. <laughs> all right. Let me, let me tell you something, folks. Um, we need young, vibrant, intelligent people in this business. And uh, when I found Nico House, I can only say that I was very impressed with this young man because this young man knows the material. And we don't find a whole lot of that. There's a lot of people talking on the screen. There are very few people on, who understand the material in depth and how it affects different communities. Oh, well, I appreciate Nico House, that. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah, I appreciate that. Look, um, I, like I said, man, uh, what we do really requires us to profit off of people's pain. And uh, our job should be to put ourselves out of business. Uh, and, and if that's not what you're in this particular industry for, then in my opinion, you shouldn't be in it. You sh this, you're in the wrong in industry. And if you can't recognize that, uh, well, then to be frank, you're probably a sociopath because like the, the worst news that we our best videos and the most views we get is from the worst news available, um, you know, that detrimentally affects people's li lives and they're trying to learn about that so they can figure out how to pivot. Um, and that's something that I take very seriously, which is why I, I do the research that I do, that I fight the fight that I do, that my team, um, shout out to everybody else on the MCSC network, Convo Couch, Robbie Yeager, Lucas, um, Marcellus from Black Sheep Theory. Uh, all of us take that responsibility very seriously. Um, and, and, and that's why we're you know a rainbow coalition of people just trying to bring change uh, in however, we can, like I said, we're activists first as well. So, you know, we both have that in common. So I definitely appreciate those words um, and make sure, like I said, y'all go follow Egberto on Twitter, go get his book. Um, and thank you all so much for tuning uh, to this live stream interview on Mikasa Sukasa. But always remember more than anything else, find your balance. Peace.